This week on The Aviators, how much difference is there really between flying a fixed-wing aircraft and a helicopter? Well, I wondered that myself, so watch as I put my training wheels back on to take a stab at the Bell 407. And try not to lose your footing as we showcase the thrills of one extreme wing-walking duo. seasons back while visiting the University of North Dakota, I had the opportunity to log my very first 1.6 flight hours in a helicopter. Well, sort of. I got behind the controls of a Bell 206 simulator to see how successfully I can translate my fixed-wing experience toward a rotary-powered aircraft. And let's just say it wasn't my most graceful performance. Oh, good, there's a pole there. That's what we need. Oh, and, and trees. There we are, and trees too. I think I just took out a light. <laughs> to be fair, I did finally get the hang of the 206 in cruise flight, but my hovering and landing skills, well, that was a different story. Holy, this is hard. Uh, oh, did I did I dent the landing gear? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, and it even made crashing noise, didn't it? That 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 hurts the ego a little. It's now been a few years since that initial helicopter sim experience, and my ego has had some time to mend. So when given the opportunity to visit the headquarters of Bell Helicopter in Fort Worth, Texas, and try my hand at their Bell 407 simulator, I felt it was due time to give it another shot. And maybe, just maybe, I'd even get the chance to fulfill a personal dream and get into the cockpit and at the controls of an actual helicopter. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. Okay, so I've got some very, very limited experience in a helicopter simulator. Okay. I'm proud to say I've logged 1.6 hours in a Bell 206. Very nice. Whoop-de-doo, he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Maitland is a regional sales manager at Bell Helicopter. What we're going to do is um, we're going to start by uh, introducing you to the controls. You've already flown the 206 simulator. Again, it looks very similar, um, but the 407 is the latest enhancement of that kind of the 206 series. It brings from the lineage of uh, the 206 series helicopters, adds a electronic fuel control um, composite uh, fuselage and um, main rotor and tail rotor blades. So we've got a lot of power, a lot of control authority, and uh, should be fun for you. While there are definite similarities between the controls of a helicopter and those of a fixed-wing aircraft, the sheer versatility of a helicopter requires the pilot to not only think in three dimensions at all times, but also to use both arms and both legs continuously to keep the aircraft flying, making it an altogether unique and at times challenging aircraft to operate. The two control levers at play for a helicopter pilot are called the cyclic and the collective, which control the pitch of the rotor blades and provide the helicopter with its ability to fly in three dimensions. The cyclic functions much like the yoke of a fixed-wing aircraft, enabling the pilot to tilt the helicopter forward, backward, and to either side, while the collective is responsible for the helicopter's upward and downward movements. In the 407, the collective is also equipped with a second function, whereby a twisting motion activates its throttle. In addition to the hand controls are two foot pedals, which control the helicopter's tail rotor, functioning to counter the torque generated by the main rotor and providing directional control to the aircraft. All right, so go ahead and uh, put your hands on the uh, cyclic and collective, and then slowly roll the throttle up until you get to that fly detent that we were talking about. Just nice and slow. And we're looking for the rotor RPM to come up as we're doing it. 
There you go. We're at the fly detent. Rotor RPM's at 100%. We have no cautions, no warnings. All the pressure temperatures are in the green, so we are ready to go flying. Okay. With the simulator startup sequence complete, it was time for my first challenge as I braced myself to once again attempt hovering the helicopter. What we'll do is just start slowly bringing the collective up, and then you'll feel the nose start to actually spin to the right just a, sm a smidge. Start feeding some left pedal. That'll keep it pointed straight. And then just relax and pick it up to hover. A little forward cycling. A little forward. There you go. Nope, too much, maybe. See how it's scooting to the right, a little bit to left. There you go. Ooh, we're airborne. Oh, my. We are. And we're sideways. <laughs> <laughs> There. Hey, you know what? Wait a second. Okay, how much of this is me? Wow. Okay, there you go. Okay. Well, then, as soon as you took your hands off, <laughs> even if you weren't controlling it, it messed me up a little. That's right. It's osmosis on not being able to hover. Hey, you know what? There you go. Very nice. Just looking out on the horizon, keeping a level attitude. It's so graceful. <laughs> Until I acknowledge that it's graceful, then it gets slightly less graceful. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happens every time you say it. <laughs> I just need to shut up, I think. <laughs> no, you're doing a fantastic job. I haven't screamed once. <laughs> Although things seemed to unravel whenever I opened my mouth and got too cocky, there was no two ways about it. I was hovering. Now it was time for my next challenge, landing the helicopter. Control your rate of descent with the collective and your rate of closure with the cyclic. So if you're going too fast still, you pull a cyclic back a little bit. Whee! Ooh, wobbling. Here we go. All right, so we're sinking a little fast. Start pulling the um, collective up slightly just to reduce that sink rate. There we go. And then keep it coming on down. A little more oh. collective. Oh. A little more collective. Oh! Oh, oh there we go. Oh, there I'll fix it. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, you want to land this? <laughs> there we go. Let's... Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I almost had it. You were tonight. so close. I almost had it. Ah, oh, I am so disappointed. I really am. Okay, so I botched the landing slightly. But overall, I have to say I was pretty happy with my performance. So I figured maybe there was a chance that Greg would let me get behind the controls of a real Bell 407. It was worth a shot anyway. I'm wondering if there's any possibility that I'm going to be in a, an actual Bell 407 today. You know what? You didn't wreck our simulator, so I think it's worth trying, to, trying our hand at the real thing. So you're confident enough in me that I may have a chance to fly with an actual Bell 407 today? I am absolutely confident. I'm confident that I will grab the controls if you start to lose control of the helicopter. <laughs> With the 407 GX, which we were about to fly, Bell has taken the composite fuselage and the main rotor system, as well as the electronic fuel control and auto starting features of their original 407, and integrated a glass cockpit with additional situational awareness and systems integration, along with further improvements to the performance and reliability of the aircraft. It's another highlight in Bell's 206 lineage, which sees even further advancement with their next model, the 505 Jet Ranger X, a five-place light single-engine helicopter, which takes the best of the 206 and 407 GX aircraft and adds a new dual electronic fuel control for additional reliability and redundancy. That's uh, 115 knots we're going. You know what, that's, it's, that's still that's accelerating. 120. Oh yeah, it'll sit there about 135. That's that's a really nice cruise speed. Yeah, that's the great thing about it. It's not only can you go hover and go land and see what things are, but you can actually get somewhere. You can actually go somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you pinch yourself? Like I mean, I'm I'm looking at this and it, it's just it's incredible. The experience is incredible. It's beautiful. We're low. We're we're relatively slow. It's I'm seeing Dallas at at. 1,250 feet. It, it's beautiful. It's it, like this experience is absolutely breathtaking. Absolutely. Like I said, I mean, there's there's nothing more fun to be in the air. I mean, I love any flying machine. As long as I'm in the air, I'm happy. But if you're sitting and talking about the freedom of flying, I mean, to go out there, we see something interesting on the ground. Let's go over, hover over it, and see what it is. Let's slow down. Let's let's fly at, at like I said, rubbernecking speed. You know, so we can see what's going on. 
after getting to man the controls in cruise flight, which admittedly felt much more comparable to flying in a fixed-wing aircraft, Greg took us down to land, and it was finally time to put my hovering skills to the test. All right, so you ready to try your hand to hover this thing? All right, so what I'm gonna do is make it simple for you. The simple way to do it this is I'm gonna hold the I'm gonna do the pedals and the collective for you. Okay. So what you want to do is I'm gonna hold the uh, pedals for you and. Just to show you, the pedals, left pedal, turns nose to the left, right pedal, turns nose to the right, and since we're adding power with the collective in a hover, if I pull the collective up, we're gonna helicopter go up. goes up, collective goes down, and we're good. Now, what we're doing with the um, cyclic is just hold our position over the ground. The way we do it is don't get crazy with the pitch attitude, just kind of look out there in the distance, and just uh, put small control put inputs into the helicopter. You've got the controls. I've got the controls. Up and right off the bat. I don't, don't want to overcorrect. Oh, I, I think I'm doing exactly that. Oh. Up here goes the big controls. Wow, this is. Use that tree as a reference right there. So we're going to point you right towards that tree. Go. Thank you, doing a heck of a job. I am concentrating. You see the smoke? <laughs> That's right. I, I smelled a burning smell. I didn't know what that was. When, when you have it just for a second, there's like a, a sense of accomplishment, you know, oh, I think I got it, I think I got it. <laughs> exactly. And then you get cocky and you lose it, but... All right, you ready to try them all? Try what? Try all the controls? No way, come on. Uh, we're gonna you know, try. You know there's a tree in front of us. I, I see <laughs> that. All right, you've got all the controls, right? Oh my goodness, man. Yeah, here's all the controls. Why, why ruin a good thing? There we go. Oh, no. So. Okay, we're leaving, I think. <laughs> See ya! <laughs> Alright, right, I've got the control. Okay, why don't you take the control? Basic helicopters, being able to fly one, it's it really doesn't take any longer to get through that transition than you would in a fixed wing. And especially if you're transiting from a fixed wing. Um, it's, good, it's a very easy process. Well, I'm not going to say that helicopters are more fun. Uh, I'll say it for you, though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. He said it. I didn't say it. I, I might agree with him. <laughs> uh, flying is fun. Yes, it is. Flying is fun. And uh, flying a helicopter is really fun. I it, agree. It, it just is. It just really, really is. Flying a fixed-wing aircraft is fun, too. Flying anything is fun. I'm having a hoot. Well, speaking of, should we go leave the ground again? Let's leave the ground. See ya. All right, here we go. Let's pull the roll that throttle up. All right, why don't you uh, climb us to 1,500 feet, and uh, we're going to head back towards Alliance. I have control of a Bell 407. I am flying a helicopter. <laughs> You're going the right direction, everything. I'm pretty impressed.